Welcome to the Creating Well Simplified Podcast. My name is Lauren Wells, here with my co-host, Chris Seveny. We're committed to providing you with the knowledge required to build wealth through real estate investing. Tired of consuming content about real estate? Stuck in analysis paralysis? Ready to do your first deal? As a member of our community, you will learn how to go from consuming content to taking that first step into the world of real estate investing. Our show is not about getting rich quick, but about providing you with the knowledge you need to take action. Join us as we speak with experienced investors who share action tips on how to escape the corporate world, start a thriving side hustle in the world of real estate, and go beyond your W-2 or 401k. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Creating Wealth Simplified podcast, where we demystify the world of investing and provide practical insights for wealth creation. I am your host, Chris Seveny. And in today's episode, we're going to be diving into a very special topic. And we are going to talk about our Regulation A offering. And we've been able to be successful with this offering. If you missed our last episode, I talked about how to get a Regulation A plus offering or a crowdfunding campaign up and running in essentially under six months. So today I want to talk about the benefits. And before we get started recording the last episode, about halfway through the episode and uh, I work and record down in my basement and all of a sudden my son comes running downstairs and I'm sitting here looking at the camera and he's sitting there like looking up and around and stuff trying to get my attention and For anyone who's in recording space or your podcast space, anytime you have something like a distraction like that, it's tough, man. Tough to overcome. Sometimes you got to pause and get started again and so forth, but it completely throws your train of thought off. But I just wanted to share that because I just like to try and keep things completely real with people and tell it like I see it. And recording, it's not easy. And I look back now, it's been probably like six years since I've recorded my first podcast. And man, I just can remember how awful it was. Bad microphone, bad video. Gail Greenberg, she had her dogs barking in the background. So I just want to say, come a long way. So as I mentioned on today's episode, I wanted to talk about the Regulation A plus offering and the benefits and why we went with the Regulation A. Previously, I talked about what is a Regulation A and kind of a process that went through it. But today I wanna talk about the why and really share my story of why we did this. And first and foremost, the number one reason was access to all investors. As I mentioned in the past, With this type of fund, we can accept accredited and non-accredited investors. We want to give everybody the opportunity and inclusivity, invest in an offering that is typically only available to institutional or accredited investors. So by empowering the non-accredited investors, giving them this option to invest, it gives them also the education to understand as they grow and potentially get to an accredited investor and look at some of these larger syndications, it gives them that experience on maybe what to look for and what not to look for. And this is something that truly cannot, I think of the term here, be, oh man, I'm going to have a brain stump right now. Can't be devalued in the sense of experience. And for example, with our offering, you can start with $5,000. Is the minimum investment. If you just start a self-directed IRA and have about $6,500 in it, you can invest. And that gives you that benefit of understanding all the processes, seeing things you like, you don't like. How does their investors and relations team interact with each other? Great analogy used a lot is for people who golf or play any sport, but golf is a simple one. You can read all the books. You can watch all you want on TV, i.e. watch all the videos on YouTube, TikTok, wherever you want to watch. And by watching all those videos, does it give you the equivalent of stepping up the tee and hitting a golf ball off the tee? 100% absolutely not. Until you step on that tee and hit the ball, you don't really know what that experience is. And by investing in an offering, 
as a non-accredited or still an accredited investor with a lower minimum, it gives the real life examples and process that you have to go through. So that is where, for me, it's so key for people because especially in today, as I record this in March of 2024, I'm big, somebody who's on bigger pockets a lot and some of these other websites and forums. And it seems like every single day, somebody's posting, I invested $50,000 in the syndication and the sponsor really was just an experience and I'm getting at the 50,000, I'm getting $3,500 back, 93% loss. Another one, 60% loss. There's a sponsor out there who's very well known and has cash calls on some of his offerings, pause distributions, and potentially could lose 60% of investors' money. Now, for your first go around, most people, again, have never experienced what it's like to invest in a syndication. Is your first go around, would you rather pay 5,000 or 50,000? That will, to learn how people, A, get your distributions issued. How does their investor relations team work? What do you want to see for quarterly, monthly, whatever reporting is part of that process? There's so much more, even though it's passive, still a lot of information that can come your way that you can learn and see how other people do things. If you had 50,000 and put it with 10 sponsors versus one, A, your risk would go down significantly, but you can see how people do things differently. Then when you get all that money back and say, okay, I want to put 50,000 in investment, you know what questions to ask because, hey, how often do you report? What do you provide in reporting? Because I've seen some people who just give me a lot of fluff and other people give me financials. So there's a lot more involved for what it is you're going to get exposed to and see. Well, that was for us. We find that again, so critical and, you know, back to our point of that low minimum and low barrier to entry, it also allows for so many more people to get involved. The other component is, so rewind back for a second, to rehash what I was just talking about and summarize, as Lauren would say, less is more, keep it simple. The key part I just want to mention is the reason why we wanted to keep it open to accredited and non-accredited investors get in with a low barrier entry. And also it allows them to get some additional education for when they look for other investments. Another component of why we did this, again, goes back to, for us, it's a debt-free approach. And what do I mean by that is I've been in real estate since the mid nineties and the early two thousands, there was some challenges in real estate because of the tech bubble. But in 2004, five, six, up until 2008, really started to see a run up. And I was working for a large general contractor, Suffolk Construction out of Boston, excellent company, some of the smartest people I've ever worked with. And I call the story of the owner mentioning that we're no longer going to be bidding on condo buildings in Florida. And they had a Florida office, which was booming at the time. And the question got asked, like, why? And he shared a story how He walked a project site or walked a job and it was, if I recall, and again, 25 plus years, so full details might be a little fuzzy, but essentially two people completely out of college, no real estate experience and easily could get hundred percent financing from the bank. And he realized if it's that easy for people to get the money to build these things, these are going to turn into a disaster because not only is managing this type of building a challenge with no experience, but building one's even harder. Lo and behold, what happened with real estate, we all know Florida also got hit really hard, but part of the reason was a lot of people without experience were taking on so much debt. And when you take on all this debt, it can be extremely challenging, especially if you're not good at managing. Let's fast forward to today. What are you seeing today with some operators? Inexperience. They weren't getting 100% financing from the bank. They were getting 65 from the bank, but 35% from investors. Their money in the deal was our management fees or our contribution to the deal. So they have no money in the deal. And what's happening is now they're struggling. And this was something that, again, I'm going to pat myself on the back for this because I thought this was very easy to see. And I say that because 
the government printed so much money, and anytime they does that, that leads to an inflationary period. Can I say, yes, I expected rates to skyrocket so fast? Well, I had no idea, but I knew they were going to go up. And for me, I'm a risk-averse person, and I like to always try and play things to the safer side. So for us, with our mortgage note fund, we don't have any debt, so it's a debt-free approach, are not worrying about cash calls or some of these other challenges others are seeing at this point in time. So that was another reason. The third I want to talk about is the community and go back to what I mentioned, that education component. And for us, we're well over 500 investors in our fund. So we've got a significant following within our fund. We're paying our distributions currently on a monthly basis. We have not missed a distribution since we got started. Again, I'm recording this in March. And as part of this, building this community and trying to educate investors, because we do have a lot of investors who have not invested in syndications in the past, and we have some who have invested heavily in syndications in the past. So we've got a very broad mix. And for us, a lot of times people are looking to pay for education or pay for learning. That's okay. I'm not going to tell people they should not. I think people should get educated as much as possible on their investment strategy or what they want to invest in. There's a lot of free tools out there, but like I mentioned earlier on, back to that golf ball scenario, you step up to the and hit. And as part of us providing this and also having these 500 investors We like to share our insights, but also hear the feedback from our investors. So how can we improve on what we provide for context? And one, for example, was so minor, but in some of our newsletters, we were just really technical in regards to some of the acronyms and terms we're using. We're realizing, oh, this person doesn't do what we do for a living. So them to understand like UPB and payoff or reinstatement on loans How can we simplify that? How can we simplify things for the investors? And that is an area that we adjusted and changed to give them a better understanding. Because when you have your investors understanding what you're doing and the journey they're on, A, they participate in that journey, but also they feel a better sense of that community because knowledge is the key. And for anybody who's out there who has investors, If you ask every single general partner out there, what would you rather have? An investor who has no knowledge or an investor with a lot of knowledge? Every single one of them would raise their hand and say, I want my investors to have as much knowledge as possible. Simple fact, that is what people want, is those investors with that knowledge. So I want to say and finalize, just wrap up this episode really just hoping that you've gained insights into why we chose this Regulation A, how it aligns with our mission to make investing accessible and community-focused, and hope you'll continue to join us on our journey through the Creating Wealth Simplified podcast as we want to continue to grow our community of savvy investors. And hopefully from those who listen to our episode and those who invest, And also follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, other social media, where we share our stories, want to give you that additional education. So hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you've missed our prior episode where we talked about how we launched that regulation in under six months, make sure to go back and check it. I want to thank you for listening. And remember that part of creating wealth, the journey is best traveled with knowledge and strategy. And I am Chris Seveny. And we'll be signing off today on another episode of Creating Wealth Simplified. Thank you for joining Lauren and I on this episode of the Creating Wealth Simplified podcast. Each week, we bring you expert education, experience, and information in a digestible format to help you identify investment opportunities so you can build wealth through real estate and take action toward your financial goals. Enjoy the show share with a friend or subscribe to the show and leave us a review. 